Hey, what's up, Metal World Peace here. The Test Your Greatness podcast, where we encourage you to test your greatness and never give up. So today, I was thinking about all the wing players, perimeter players that I play with, and which group could be which group, right? So, got drafted in 1999. Now, just skipping forward a little bit. I'm going to skip the Trenton Hassel. So when I was called a 21, 20, a training hassle, he, had, he was a second round pick, had a great career. I remember locking up people on the wing. Now keep in mind, we only won, what, 13 games first year, 15 games second year. We was young. But in terms of lockdown, our presence was felt. Yeah, you probably was going to beat us, but whoever was on the wings, they knew they was going to be in for a very long night. And I remember thinking to myself, if me and Trent Hassel would have lasted in Chicago, and by the way, that was probably my fault why I wasn't in Chicago. Nobody else but mine. But I think that we would have locked a lot of people up and I was only getting better, as we all know. So Trent Hassel is definitely up there. Then you go fast forward to Indiana. So Indiana, I also play with Reggie Miller. So Trent Hassel, his defense was incredible, obviously. Offense wasn't as great as Reggie Miller's offense. So me and Reggie did a lot of great things in Indiana. You know, him on the offense side, myself on the defensive side. Then we had one specific time when Reggie was hurt, and then I played with Al Harrington on the perimeter. Now, <laughs> playing with Al Harrington on the perimeter, I don't know if I've ever... That probably was one of the most dominating perimeter duos that I've ever seen. Um, you had Al, who you couldn't stop on offense. I was playing the two. Now, keep in mind, most of my career, I was a three because I was pretty, pretty, pretty big. I had to move to the two for about 15 to 16 games. People forget that during that stretch, I think we were 16 and two. Or 16 and 1. We might have even won 15 out of 16. It was something like that. Quote me or correct me if I'm, if I'm wrong. But that duo stands out. Then when Reggie came back, Al moved back to the 4. And then I moved back to the 3. But for a period of time, I was like, wow, this is insane. Then you fast forward to the next year when it was still I was still playing with Reggie. But then also Steven Jackson came. That was a pretty incredible dynamic because you had a guy like Steve who could play offense, could not only score, but could knock down big shots. It's a big difference, right? It's a big difference when you could score and or knock down big shots when you need them. And that was Stack Jack. He can get stops, he can score, and he can knock down big shots. So that group, that duo was pretty. Obviously, as we know, it was a really good duo, and it, it was pretty insane to see the things that, you know, that we foreseen, the things that could have came. Then you fast forward to myself and Bonzi Wells. Now, in terms of, I talked about Al Harrington. When, when I played with Bonzi and when I played with Al, those were two similar uh, backcourts or front backcourts, perimeter players on the wings. So... Bonzi could rebound, score, probably wasn't as good as a defender as Al, and maybe not as versatile. He was more in the post, giving you work in the post, where Al would go to the block, mid-range, and step back out to the three, and he was taller. Now, I think my best my, my best playoff series was probably, as an as a offense and defense, not just defense, probably at Houston, and I'll get to that duo in a second, but in Sacramento, I was probably in my prime and a, bit of, a little bit more of a bag, a little bit more complete, and then, you know, playing with Bonzi was pretty tough. I remember people or opposing coaches, go get Bonzi, then I'll take him to the post. All right, go get Matt Bonzi and take him to the post. It was literally like that, and very similar there was a couple other players that had that, those capabilities, such as Steven Jackson. But when you look at the body size, me and Al, similar frames, me and Bonzi, 
similar frames. It was people just could not do anything. You basically got two, three, fours playing the two and three way before you um, small ball and just uh, playerless positions. You know, uh, I think that that duo was pretty tough. Then you move on to Ron Artest and Shane Battier. That was a really interesting group. I I I, I was also there with Tracy McGrady, but. With Tracy, he got hurt. It was Shane and Tracy started. When Tracy got hurt, I got inserted into the starting lineup. So I didn't really get a chance to play with T-Mac. Um, even though in practice, he was pretty incredible. And in the games, he was pretty incredible before he got hurt. Um, but now, let's get to Shane, myself and Shane. That was super dynamic because me and Shane, I got to imagine if I had to pick the two best defenders out the group. Now, I would throw Trent Hassel in there. Not saying, you know, a couple of the guys wasn't great, but Trenton Hassel, if you don't know him, his defense was impeccable. It was incredible. Shane, not necessarily a lockdown defender, but he could put you in positions where you can look pretty bad on top of being tall, athletic, and strong. So playing with Shane was really incredible because I've never, I've never <laughs> received so many kind of marching orders and direction from another perimeter player on defense and schemed as much as I received from Shane. Shane was like a coach out there. So as we're in the game, and even pregame, the way he would prep for the game would be incredible. Some of the stuff he would tell me to do <laughs> would just work. And I'm like, man, that's kind of how I would have thought about it. But I was so overconfident in my defense where I didn't really watch a lot of, I didn't watch a lot of film at some point in time because I mean, you're either going to play well or you're going to play bad. And most of the time, it wasn't, you know, it was going to be a rough night. So I kind of got bored just locking people up. I should have kept my foot on the gas. But you know what? It was better for the opponent. Now, we we'll fast forward to L.A., obviously, Kobe Bryant. Now, his package is incredible, as we know. R.I.P. my brother Kobe. Playing with, Now, <laughs> on the flip side, I didn't have to do as much. So I was just a defender. So that duo might have been pretty good because now I'm only focusing on defense and he's playing defense and offense. And you know, I can go into my package. It wasn't a big package, but it was a, it was effective package, you know, meaning you're just too small with the exception of like a Matt Harpering or I don't know, a Boris Diaw in the post. Um, but the rest, no disrespect, but it's a little bit too small. So now you got me and Kobe on the wings. And the same thing. The difference with playing with Kobe is if I had a mismatch, we're still <laughs> going to Kobe. So if I had to pick my top five, even my top duos, but my top five duos that can beat any one of the duos with me, you know, in the lineup. Hmm. All right, let's just put the Kobe and Ron Artest to the side because that's a great one. The Al Harrington and Ron Artest duo. Y'all got to see the tapes. You got to see the tapes where me and Al started and just go through the highlights and look at the wins. I just want to let y'all know that it was really tough to guard us two, you know, um, and at that time we were both 23, 24, young, fresh, could move, could score, you know, I was a better rebound, I was probably a better, you know, on the ball defender, but pretty much equal, I also got hurt a little bit early in his career, um, so I'm a, I'm gonna go put that, I'm gonna push that one up a little bit, and then I'm gonna push up, um, me and, me and Stat Jack didn't have enough time together. I think we would have did great things. We did, we did, um, yeah, just not enough time together. Actually, we were never even in the playoffs together, which is ultimately my fault. But that, so that was um, a really short-lived moment. But that that's up there also. Then you go Meta and Bonzi. That was a, that was a top. That was a tough one, you know. Bonzi Wells. I remember in the playoffs, you know, I had you know I had 
a couple plays coming my way. And I remember just saying, hey, let's just go to Bonzi. Like, if this guy is going to be going to Bonzi, you know, let's just go to Bonzi. I was like, Bonzi, you, can we just, like, switch this up? And Bonzi was like, yeah, let's do that. Because initially, I remember Coach Adam was calling plays for me. But it just I was just trying to win. I didn't really care about anything else. Yeah, I want to get buckets. And I did get buckets that series. But that was a really tough group, a tough duo to, to match up against. And then you got Shane Battier, which was, like, just incredible knowledge of the game. I remember the same way I would look at Kobe on offense, I would look at Shane on defense and then also executing and keeping the full space and balanced on defense and balanced on offense. I remember being in the game with Kobe and being in awe when he had 25 straight points. Game five against the Celtics in the finals, a game in which we lost. And I say that because I remember watching Shane and how he would defend and kind of being in awe a little bit like, wow, this guy is like really smart. He's not overly physically overwhelming. He's not overly fast and quick, but just smart angles and just wears on you, you know, wears on you quarter after quarter after quarter after quarter. So now I'm just going to go out the limb and I'm just going to pick, you know, my top duos that I play with on the perimeter. Okay, so I'll go. I'm gonna. I'm gonna go. Off, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go off the cliff here. I'm just gonna say, Ron Artest and Kobe. Okay, I'm just gonna say Ron Artest and Kobe. Then I'm gonna say <laughs> Ron Artest and Al Harrington. <laughs> then I'm gonna say Stephen Jackson and Ron Artest. Then I'm gonna. I, it's gonna be a tie between Steven Jackson and Ron Artest and Bonzi Wells and Ron Artest. That dynamic was sick. They both brought something different to the table. As you know, you watch both of their games. Bonzi was more in the block, where Stack was on the perimeter to the block, and then Bonzi was more from the block to the perimeter. Two different type of plays. Then I'm gonna go with Shane, and I definitely gotta give a shout out to Trent again. Um, I just wanted to create this segment because as I was looking at YouTube, I was like, wow, which one of those duos was the toughest duo that I was a part of? And there were just so many good groups uh, that I've just mentioned. So shout out to all of her, um, shout out to all the perimeter players that I played with. What a great time. And now I'm 44 years old. And who's my best perimeter player that I'm playing with right now? Nobody. I don't ball anymore. I just talk about sports and I coach. Metal World Peace. Until next time, test your greatness. And remember, never give up. Metal World Peace be out.